Uh, hmm? Don't you ever think about the children when you do those comics? No, I'm not doing them for children. I don't object. I don't object to children read them, but uh, I'm doing them for uh, adult fans. I've never forgotten how precious it is to have the dream job of your youth, your fondest dream, actually come true. When I first started doing it, I remember thinking, uh, like in some imaginary situation, if I was at a big uh, banquet reception and some big shot was we were sipping martinis or something, and he says, I'm the personal physician of the Queen of England. And I'd say, that's nothing. I write and draw Uncle Scrooge comics. These are the world's best-selling, most popular comic books, and they have been for 60, 70 years. And yet, in America, they disappeared 40 years ago, and now they're totally unknown. So it's not like they're not as popular. They're unknown. I like the times when they, uh, they buy a print and they want to make sure that I know it's for their two-week-old child. In other words, they're buying it for somebody who has no idea who I am and will probably never know who I am, but... Uh, but th doesn't the, the true fans like make it worth it? Oh, coming? that's the only reason I did it for an extra 20 years, as frustrating as that work was. The fans in Europe and the, and the few in America, they made it all worth it. I was the first person, especially in Europe, who fans could speak to. Karl Marx never traveled, so I was the first person that they could pour out their appreciation, not just for my stories, but for Marx's stories and everybody's stories. And not only did I enjoy that uh, gratitude, but it actually it sounds corny. It was like a, a duty, like a sacred duty. It was, it was like my job to accept that appreciation and uh, try to take it as humbly as I could. Gosh, that made it worthwhile, and it still does.